Hello there, DFS family, and welcome back to the Sunday School NFL DFS podcast powered by Fantasy Six Pack. I am your host, Dave Eddy, and you can find me on Twitter at Corporal Eddy. I, of course, am joined, as always, by my incredibly handsome co-host and birthday boy, Mr. Patrick Makowski, whom you can find on Twitter at PattyMac33. Now, before we get started, as always, please do us a quick favor if you have not already and hit that like button. And if you have not subscribed yet, then do yourself the favor uh, doing that so you can get all the notifications when this starts to, starts to go live. And if you want to keep a leg up on all your buddies, swing on over to fantasy6pack.net where there's tons of great authors with tons of great content uh, that you definitely want to check out. Now, Patrick, um, I do have some good news and I've got some bad news for you. Um, I'm going to let you decide which you'd like to hear first. Uh, give me the bad news first, Dave. Oh, the bad news, huh? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Patrick. Here's the bad news, right? We only have five podcasts left this season. We're already into week 12 of the regular season. Can you believe that it has flown by so quickly? That is absolutely crazy that the football season is almost over already. But, hey man, I do have good news that comes along with that. We got a nice little silver lining, Patrick. This means that you can only lose five more times to me this year. Yeah. Uh, How how excited are you? I'm a little excited, I gotta be honest. I, I uh, I haven't been producing quite as well as I'd hoped. Um, so I'm glad you're taking advantage of it, um, and uh, just kind of trying to cha- turn the ship around a little bit. So well, un- until we do that, I'm going to keep my my uh, my mouth shut and, and and my jaw from running. So well, you know that on my side of things, I like to be a little bit stat driven. So I wanted to to go ahead and just give you a quick little stat before we moved on, Patrick. Ever since I uh, started turning the screws on you here. I have won four out of the last six weeks, my friend. And I got to tell you, I don't think that's going to slow down. Yep, like I said, uh, I have not been uh, giving you my best, and I need to figure out how to right that ship. Uh, So kudos to you. Um, Hopefully, uh, in this last five weeks, um, I can get that righted so I don't got to hear about it all offseason. Yeah, it's getting a little bit old, Patrick. I like you too much to give you this much shit. Yeah, it's okay. It's what friends do, right? I guess so. Well, why don't you lead us into the, the, the topic here, Patrick? Yeah, so, you know, third installment of our, our new segment, um, you know, where we take a few questions we get from people that are new to DFS or inexperienced uh, to help them understand the ins and outs of the hobby. Um, so our Virgin Mary question for this week um, is kind of a combination of the past two weeks as it continues to drill down to the meat and potatoes of the QB stacking. So, David, what should you be looking for in the stats when deciding on which QB to stack? How deep should you look at quarterback? And is it ever okay to play a rookie or a backup quarterback? All right, yeah, that, that definitely kind of melds a couple of them together. So uh, let me just let me tackle the back end of that first, all right? Um, now, playing a backup QB is obviously never going to be a good idea. Um, just remember, one of the golden rules is volume over matchup. So playing a guy at you know any position that you aren't sure is ever even going to see the field um, is, is definitely not going to be a good play. Uh, now playing a rookie QB, on the other hand, is definitely an option. In fact, um, I wouldn't even really consider somebody you know a uh, rookie once they've you know had a couple starts underneath their their belt. You know, um, example Justin Herbert. Um, I have a feeling we're going to talk about him later. Um, he is one of the best QBs uh, for DFS this year, to this point at least, and he is a rookie. Now, after you know his first couple starts, you know he's proven himself, you know, trustworthy enough that I was comfortable playing him. Now, on the flip side of that, we have somebody like like Tua. 
Um, you know, Tua now has, you know, enough stars underneath his belt that, you know, you could definitely consider playing him, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, while they're both rookies, I am just not interested in playing Tua right now. And it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, the experience. It's just, you know, Herbert has much better weapons, has been much more consistent, and his volume is significantly higher. Uh, now, the stats you should be looking at, I think, are, are pretty simple. You're just looking at how good or bad their opponent has been against, um, you know, the QB position, um, good or bad they've been against the wide receiver position, tight end position. Um, now, if that's too much work for you, um, which is possible because, you know, you really got to, you know, dive into stats to, to really get that information. Um, and let's just say, you know, you want to play some DFS but not spend, you know, hours each week doing research just because either you're not playing enough to make it worth your while um, or whatever. You know, you can definitely um, take a shortcut that at least will get you on the right train of thought and that you can just look at over-unders for each game and attack, you know, the top, whatever, you know, three or four um, that have the highest game total. So this will at least point you in the right direction of the games that, you know, should be the highest scoring. Now, as far as how deep to go at quarterback... I mean, truly, that is a, a topic for, for another day. Um, to answer that properly would, would get to be a pretty involved answer. Um, quick version of how deep you should go really just depends on the variables around the QB position. So if there are a lot of great values at other position and you have some extra money to spend, then, you know, I would say, you know, you should be targeting the high-end quarterbacks. If there is no value anywhere else on the slate, then you're kind of going to be forced to find mid or you know low tier quarterbacks that you can stack so that you can fill out the rest of your uh, lineup because you need a lineup full of guys that are capable of getting you the four X that you're looking for. So, in a nutshell, I'd say it simply comes down to how much uh, salary flexibility is available outside of the main gain stack. Yeah, really good points, and I'm 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 right where you're at. You know, that's how I start out uh, every week is with the matchup. And, you know, I mean, there's been several weeks this year where you're like, why are you playing that fucking guy? Like um, well, Joe Flacco? Like Joe Flacco, who only scored two and a half points less than uh, your quarterback last week, who was, what was his name? Uh, I... The guy from Baltimore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he only scored two and a half points less than that fucking guy. For twenty three hundred dollars less, huh, but so, yet I'm hosting the show. Interesting. <laughs> well, like I said, I haven't been very good with the other, the other aspects and positions, you know. But it always starts with matchup for me. I want to see who who they're going against and how bad they've been over the last four weeks. That's where I start. Um, I usually finish up somewhere, uh, you know, looking at history throughout the season, seeing what they got going on. Uh, you know, in the defensive backfield, if anybody's hurt, if anybody's out, uh, what they're susceptible to, you know, wide receivers in the slot or tight ends or pass catching running backs. Um, and, I, and that's how I make my determination for a quarterback as well. So, Well, with that in mind, Patrick, we've kind of uh, kind of talked about this guy just a little bit already. So why don't you just lead into your gospel for this week, week 12? Yeah, man. So, David... Justin Herbert, $7,200, Chargers at the Bills. How impressive is this fucking kid, Dave? I mean, wow. He's averaging 26.7 fantasy points a game on the season. That's ninth most in the entire NFL. The only guys that are in front of him are Dak, Kyler Murray, McCaffrey, Delvin Cook, Russell Wilson, Devontae Adams, Patty Mahomes and Josh Allen. That's a pretty impressive group of guys to be. And this is a rookie. He's averaging 5.2 fantasy points a game, more than the next highest quarterback in the league. Tom Brady, only averaging 21.2. This kid is uber impressive. He scored 23 or more points in seven of his nine games this year. He has only one game where he scored under 21, and that was his second week as a starter against Carolina with 19.7. He's thrown two or more touchdowns in seven of nine games. By the way, he threw for over 300 yards in both of those. He's got five games this year, over 310 passing yards, and has chucked the rock 
42 times or more in four games on the season, 22 touchdowns, six interceptions, 2,700 yards passing, and a QB rating, which doesn't count for much in daily fantasy, but 104.7 QBR. That's eighth best in the league. The the kid is just super talented, uh, you know, and, and when you look at his opponent over the last four weeks in the Bills, um, they're giving up the third most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks, 24 Point eight, and Justin has got weapons, and he knows how to use them. Him and Keenan Allen are on some kind of a different planet right now. The way that they're working with one another. Then you got Mikey Williams, you got Hunter, Hunter Henry, and he may even be getting Austin Eckler back this week, whom he hasn't had for the last six games. Play good players, David. Volume over matchup. Volume, volume, volume. Josh Allen and Justin Herbert are going to be exchanging blows in this one. This is a heavyweight battle. I hope to see this game on TV this weekend. Yep, that is a surprising play, um, you know, compared to what you would have thought, you know, week one. I mean, Justin Herbert's not a guy that coming out of college I had high hopes for. I thought he was going to be a big old bust. And come to find out, he is <laughs> arguably the most consistent DFS option at quarterback. It's it's unbelievable, man. Um, he is in play every single week. Um, now, my guy is also pretty impressive and also in play every week, but also is more expensive. Um, I hope you're going to be sitting down for this one, Patrick. Uh, I am having my gospel this week, Patty Mahomes. 8K, Chiefs versus uh, the Bucks. Now, I'm guessing that you know me having the core play that is paying up at quarterback again is not what you were expecting. As obviously, I you know typically pay down there with this salary. Um, it, it's going to be tough because the salary on the entire slate is is tough this week, and I'm going to not only be paying up at quarterback. But I'm also, with Mahomes, going to be paying up at wide receiver for Hill and at tight end for Kelsey for these stacks. So main issue uh, with this play this week, like I said, is going to be the salary. But I do have an answer to that issue that you know will be covered as we get through some of the other segments. Now, to be honest, usually my core play um, is the first segment that I fill out each week. This week, it was the last. Uh, nothing stood out to me as obvious because there really are no clear cost-saving plays that I'm 100% comfortable with this week. And there are just so many good quarterbacks on the slate this week. Um, and I just, you know, wasn't 100% comfortable playing with them. Um, you know, so for me, um, you know, for this matchup, uh, the Bucks are league average in points uh, per game against QBs and wide receivers. Um, so, you know, that doesn't point to this being a core play. Uh, but for me, I wanted to pick the QB that I was most confident in being my core play this week, and, and that is Mahomes. As I mentioned, the Bucks are, you know, fired against the passing game, um, and they are second worst against the running game. I, I didn't expect, or I don't expect this game uh, to be, you know, super low-scoring defensive battle. So I think the Chiefs will end up throwing the ball at a very high level. Um, you know, just because the Bucks are so tremendous against, um, you know, the run. I'm going to take my chances here with the best QB in the game, best tight end in the game, and the most explosive wide receiver in the game. Uh, over half the team's targets do go between Hill and Kelsey. So, you know, getting a high volume stack here is easily done. I'm even going to get crazy enough where I'm going to stack all three of those guys together. So, listen, man, if I have to trust anyone this week, I am just not sure I could find a better trio to put my money on. Yeah, and the only thing that, you know, really, you know, you mentioned it from the get is going to keep me away from Pat Mahomes is just that $8,000 price tag. Um, you know, I, I think because you have to play him with Hill and or Kelsey. Um, so, you know, that's going to eat a really good chunk of change up. Um, I do like the matchup against Tampa. You know, from from what I saw, Tampa has been the fourth worst in the NFL over the last four weeks against quarterbacks. Um, 
and and we know that Tom um, and and Patty are, are going to go at it. So um, I, I like to play. I'm I might have a lineup or two uh, with Mahomes in there as well. Um, so yeah, it, it should be it should be interesting. And the guy puts up points. Uh, it doesn't matter who his opponent is. You know, he's one of those guys that's just super super talented uh and can make plays from nowhere so you know he's going to score yeah so. to, to play Mahomes this week you definitely have to do your research because um you know like i said you've got to find the guys that i'm going to talk about that you can save salary on that that are going to still be capable of you you know being able to put together a lineup that you can win with um so now that we've talked about that why don't you go ahead and lead us into your devil this week patrick so my devil this week, the guy that I am fading is Nick Chubb, seventy one hundred dollars. The Browns at the Jags, a really good matchup for running backs. Um, you know, on the season, Jacksonville has been just about horrible uh, when it comes uh, to to stopping opposing RBs. Uh, but it's about the price, it's about the workload, and the output for me here. Now you've got Kareem Cunt in the same backfield. For a full fifteen hundred dollars less than Chubb, answer me this, David. Why would you spend fifteen hundred dollars more to get a Chubb when you know you could blow your load in cunt and end up with the same result? Well, you in the, you, well, you put it that way, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> in in the six games this year that these guys have started uh, in the backfield together, Chubb is averaging 17.2 fantasy points a game. Hunt, 16.3 fantasy points a game. Chubb, 15.5 touches a game. Hunt, 15.6 touches a game. Now, as mentioned, this is a good matchup. Jacksonville has given up the six most fantasy points a game to running backs, 26.84. But over the last four weeks, they're only given up just under 21. So they have gotten better, or it's been subpar matchups. In summary, don't overpay for a chub when you can still end up with that happy ending with cunt. I mean, I think that they're both fine plays. Uh, the problem is, you know, I, I guess, you know, it was really disappointing how, you know, Hunt performed whenever Chubb was out because he really he really didn't do any better. So it's it's kind of mind-boggling that, he actually does a little bit better when when you know Chubb is in the backfield with him. I guess I'd I'd love to see what happened, uh, you know, if Hunt was out and Chubb got you know uh, an opportunity because I think he would get more of a workload. But yeah, it's hard to play either one of these guys, even though either one of them could absolutely just go crazy. It's 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 just a frustrating situation, you know. Um, for me, guy that I'm fading this week, uh, this is no brainer for me for a, a ton of reasons. Um, Alvin Kamara, 8,200 bucks, Saints versus the Broncos. Uh, three biggest reasons that, that this is uh, an absolute big fat no for me. First of all, with Hill under center, he had one target. And he had his first ever game without a catch last week. One of the reasons Kamara has been such a great DFS option has always been his volume in the passing game. Uh, second... Again, with Hill under center last week, his backup Latavius Murray, who I think we're going to talk about later, uh, not only outsnapped him, but he also outtouched him last week. This was not due to an injury. This was not due to game script. Uh, Kamara was healthy and it was out there the entire game, and it was close throughout. So just not what you would expect to happen, and not what happened with you know breeze you know behind uh you know that offense lastly with all that being said kamara is the third most expensive player on this slate kamara is just someone that is not going to be in play for me this week uh especially considering they're going against a top 10 um broncos team and points against that position i i just i just don't know how you could pay 8200 dollars for that this week yeah, and, and as you mentioned, we'll we'll dig a little bit deeper into that down the line here. But I'm I'm totally with you. It was uh, very interesting, and I hadn't realized, you know, that <laughs> up until I was watching some uh, some TV yesterday, uh, that Camara only had the one target, 
and that this was the first game in his career that he had not had a catch. Now, what is the one thing that is different when it comes to that equation? And it's the fact that Drew Brees was not behind center. So is it a telltale sign of what's to come? We don't know. Um, can you expect Sean Payton is going to make some kind of an adjustment? Absolutely. He's one of the better offensive minds in the game. Um, but I- I'm with you on this one. I'm going to be staying away from Kamara myself. Yep. So with that in mind, um, and with, you know, the, you know, the salary at, you know, quarterback and my stacking this week, like I said, we have to start getting into some cheaper plays. Um, so that brings me right to one of, um, those options for me. And this is going to be my, my archangel uh, this week, my pivot. I'm going Naeem Hines, uh, 4,600 bucks for the Colts as they take on the Titans. Now reports heading into last week were that Hines was going to get the bulk of the carries in that backfield. Uh, going up against, you know, um, the run funnel this week, or I'm sorry, going up against the run funnel that, you know, the Packers had. Uh, as it turned out, the more traditional running back, Jonathan Taylor, ended up getting just about every single carry. Um, so even if for that reason alone, uh, I think people are going to be very off of Hines this week. And I think that makes him a, a good play for a pivot um, at a pretty cheap option this week uh, at running back. Now, Hines has been very hit or miss this year, uh, but he is definitely, you know, clearly the best pass catching back in that offense. And either him or the emerging uh, Michael Pittman has been Rivers' favorite target through the air. Their opponent this week is giving up the second most points per game to the running back position. And while it could be another crack for Taylor, I, I really think that Hines makes for a nice pivot this week. Um, should be the lower owned of the two, uh, which makes this a little bit more unique. Uh, that gives you, you know, a little bit of an advantage um, as he could head for one of his bigger games. Yeah, uh, you know, and and Hines is uh, is a guy that I've got, uh, you know, in my season long uh, league. So I've kind of kept a little closer tabs on him, you know, throughout the year. And, and the one interesting thing that I found is, you know. I just I do not play him when they're at home. And, and when you're taking a look at, you know, the splits between him and Taylor, you know, when Hines is at home, he's averaging just 6.7 fantasy points a game. But on the road, the dude's tearing it up 17.7 fantasy points a game. And then you flip the switch and you look at, you know, the other back in that in that backfield and Taylor On the road, averaging 10 points a game. But at home, he's averaging 15.3. So, you know, how much do you want to read into that? I don't know. Um, But for me, it kind of seems like, you know, when they're on the road, the game script is a little bit more pass. Um, When they're at home, they like to pound that rock between the tackles a little bit with Taylor. But that's the, you know, that's the struggle with these teams that have two backs or three backs. You know, you don't know who's going to get a bulk of the work. You don't know who's going to show up and who's not. Um, So it's really a coin toss, Um, you know, week in and week out with these guys trying to figure out who it is that you want to play. So a bad play? No, not at all. The guy's got a ton of talent. And when Rivers can find him um, and he can get the ball in open space, uh, he knows how to find the end zone. So, um, so yeah, my my Archangel Davey this week, um, you know, my pivot – uh, is a, a wide receiver uh, out there in New England. Uh, they got the Cardinals this weekend, and it's Demir Bird uh, for forty one hundred dollars. Now Pat Peterson will almost surely be shadowing Jacoby Myers, as you know he's been their really go to, their number one receiver, um, especially over the course of the last four weeks. Um, but last week, you know Bird had six catches on seven targets for 132 yards, a touchdown. Over the last four weeks, the Cardinals are second worst in the NFL against opposing wide receivers, giving up a whopping 51.3 fantasy points a game to the position. Cam Newton is finally starting to come into his own this season as he's averaging just a hair under 21 points a game in his last four As usual, you can expect to see Mr. Murray putting up some big numbers for Arizona. Um, The kid is insanely talented. Um, And as a result of that, 
Cam's going to have to chuck it around and keep up. I really like Cam Newton this week too. Uh, just a little plug, but it's volume for bird in this one for me, that magical four X, you know, would consist of seven catches for 90 yards. Uh, is it totally out of the question? No, not at all. Um, at the price point, 4,100, this is one of those guys, you know, if you're going to be paying up for Mahomes and Hill and Kelsey, this is one of those guys you can sh- uh, save a little bit of coin on. I mean, let's say he gets another 10 yards and reaches that 100-yard plateau. There's three more points. What if he finds the end zone? There's six more points. I mean, that's 6X on a 4,100 investment. Uh, I like Demir Bird against the Cardinals this week. I don't trust Patriots, Patrick. I never will. They are too up and down. Um, I mean, Jacoby Myers was a no-brainer last week, and he didn't do anything. Uh, Demir Bird is going to have a lot of recency bias. He'll probably be decently owned. Um, You play Demir Bird, you've either got to pay a ton of money to play him with Hopkins, um, which would make sense, but he's going to have Stephen Gilmore on him. Uh, You could pay down for Kirk. That makes sense. I don't know what Kirk's price is, but... Um, I don't know, man. It's just hard for me to trust anyone on the New England side of the ball. They're they're just not consistent enough. Um, not that you know they're bad plays, but um, you know it's just hard to hard to trust them. Um, so let's get into the hardest one. I think um, each week, at least for me, uh, what do you got yeah, for your heresy? What do you got? Contrarian play this week. The contrarian is always the most difficult one for me too, just because I'm thinking, you know, you think along the lines of, okay, who's somebody not going to play? What matchup really sucks? And you're just kind of taking a flyer on the guy and and hoping that he produces, you know. Um, But we talked about it a little bit earlier, you know, with Kamara. Uh, My contrarian this week is Latavius Murray. He's $5,900 against the Broncos. And as my devilishly charming co-host stated earlier murray out touched camara last week will hill behind center he is twenty three hundred dollars less than alvin camara now i'm not quite sure where davy was seeing where you know denver is in the the top 10 uh i did a little bit more looking and you're right on the season they're they're more like 12 but over the last two or the last four weeks, Denver's given up the second most fantasy points to opposing running backs, 32.3. So being that they're that good as a season as a whole, that just shows you how bad they've been over the last four weeks. The only team worse in the entire NFL is our Detroit football Lions. Now, Murray's had double-digit touches in all but two of the Saints games this season. Hill's going to hawk some of the goal line touches from Murray and Kamara, but nonetheless, if Murray can reach pay dirt, this could be a sneaky little momentum swing this weekend and what I feel to be some rather limited options uh, at the running back position. I'm going to have a flyer on Murray in a couple lineups um, just to see how the Hill behind center thing works out again. I tell you, usually I like to just, you know, play the devil's advocate role on, you know, both of these picks just to, you know, just to give a, you know, a, a differing opinion just so that it's out there. But it's always hard with the contrarian because, you know, you, you could obviously do that on all of them because that's kind of the whole point of the play. Um, right. I guess the only thing that I really would say is, you know, 5900 is a little on the pricey side for me. Um, you're looking at, you nope, know, I agree. That was, yeah, that's one of the things that I was looking at too. You know, if he was, you know, around five grand or so, then I think it'd be a, a much, a much better play. Uh, yeah. But 5900 seemed a little bit pricey for me as well. But I mean, I, I definitely, you know, I definitely see where it's coming from, you know, so it's, it's no, no worse than, you know, a lot of things you could put into that spot. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going Jarvis Landry. Uh, 5,200 bucks brownies against the Jags. Uh, listen, man, Jarvis, it's been terrible at a little bit over six and a half points per game over the last four weeks. Uh, Browns have their two great running backs healthy, as previously mentioned. Um, and they're both back on the field, uh, going up against the Jags, who are, you know, giving up tons of points, uh, to running backs. So the thought here, uh, would really be, you know, 
for this game that they're going to just run the ball, you know, down the Jags' throat. Uh, Chump, uh, Chubb, and Hunt uh, both could be in line for 20 touches this game. Would absolutely not be a surprise. Uh, you know, game script would definitely back that up as most likely scenario is going to be the Browns getting out to a lead and then, you know, running the ball to, you know, kind of just kill the clock in the game. So, to me, these are the places that Contrarian plays are born. Now, if everything that we expect to happen happens, which it rarely does, um, unless we're talking about the Lions, um, you know, the Browns are still going to have to throw the ball at least a little bit. Uh, now, y- you know, you can get unique and you can target, you know, Landry in the passing game as well here. Uh, Jags are uh, giving up the third most points per game to wide receivers. So, you know, they're kind of giving it up everywhere, Patrick. So for as bad as Landry has been in the points department, a part of that has been because of some of the weather issues that they've, uh, you know, ran into recently, and you know that has definitely taken away his opportunities. They they played in the some of the worst weather here recently. Um, so for me, what I'm more looking at at this, you know, stage for him would be he's got a 29% um, target share since OBJ was lost for the season. That's sixth highest in the league. So he's definitely getting the volume. It's just, you know, the volume itself has been less because of the weather that they've played in recent. It just hasn't been conditions where you can throw the ball. So he's getting the ball at a high rate as far as, you know, number of total targets. So sometimes I think the the number of targets um, could be misleading. It's the target share that is really the most important stat to me. Um but, I mean, when you just look a little bit deeper into this matchup, I think that this could be a really good spot to get contrarian. Yeah, because you're right. Nobody's going to play the guy. Um, uh, I will. <laughs> and, he's, I mean, again, he's 5200 bucks. Not super yeah. cheap, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a cost saver. You're getting a guy that gets, you know, a, a high market share of volumes against a bad passing defense. I mean, it is possible that, you know, like I said, Chubb and Hunt both get 20 plus carries a game, and that's what propels them. That, that's entirely possible. Um, and I think that's where most people are going to lean. So that's where I think Landry comes in. And I mean, a little bit of a spoiler alert part of the contrarian play here with Landry is, is part of my Hail Mary. So um, let's, let's go right into that. All right. Together. All right. So, you know, as for MME, I, I think that, you know, I don't know how much we've really talked about this, but, you know, stacking your quarterback is, is obvious. So, you know, let's say I have Mahomes, Kelsey Hill. Like I said, I'm strapped for cash. So I've got to plug in Hines, um, you know, and then I, I like to always, 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 always do I have a secondary stack. A secondary stack is going to just consists of two players that are positively correlated to each other. So it's going to be two opposing players. A lot of times that's a, you know, a wide receiver on both sides of the ball from, um, you know, the same game, uh, you know, could be a tight end mix in there too, obviously um, could be a running back. But again, like we've talked about before um, considering running backs, you know, in the passing game, you know, really starts to limit the field. So, you know, if I'm going to be playing um, Jarvis, which I think is a good play, you know, developing a secondary stack means I've got to have somebody on the Jag side of the ball that I can run it back with. And I think I've got a, a good secondary stack here option um, that would be a, a huge cost saver. So so my Hail Mary for this week is going to be Chris Codling. He's at the bare minimum, 3K, again, you know, on the Jag side of the ball there against the Brown. So, you know, for me, again, this play lines up with with Landry to give me that cheaper secondary stack, so that you know I can save money. I still have correlation, give myself you know a chance to to take these suckers down. Um, you know the correlation with Landry is definitely part of you know why you know he even showed up on my screen. Um, so since uh, Luton has taken over at QB, Conley is second on the team at market share. Uh, he sits at nineteen percent. Uh, he's only behind Shark, who's at 23, so a decent you know amount. It's not the 29 you know that we're seeing from from Jarvis, but again, that's six best in the league. 19 percent that that's a fair amount, and they're throwing the ball at a much higher rate. So 19 percent you know w- with just the way that things have gone over the last few weeks is actually fairly equal as far as number of targets. Um, now past two weeks, uh, Conley is only one target behind Shark at a minimum salary. 
it is only going to take 12 points for him to just hit the bare minimum value that we want. So if he scores a touchdown, he's basically automatically there for you. Uh, Jags likely going to have to pass in this game to stay up with the Browns, um, you know, or, you know, to catch up with them. So the volume should definitely be there. So as a Hail Mary, get him a guy at a minimum price that gives me correlation to another spot in the lineup. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, so I'm going to be the bearer of bad news a little bit for you. Uh, Conley and Don't tell me he's hurt. Oh, oh, son of a bitch. With an injury, a hip. However, um, you've also got Shark out this week in Jacksonville as well. So Keenan Cole is what you're telling me. So you got Keenan Cole. That's that's all that's left. Well, no, no. And Chenault. You got Keelan Cole at (sighs) 3,600, and you've got Chenault at 3,300. So. So okay. two, you know, it's their top two guys now, and and they're both, you know, capable receivers. You look at Keelan Cole. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, I'm seeing a total of 12 targets. Um, you know, he found the end zone once. Nothing uberly impressive. You know, we both were kind of, uh, you know, a little high on Chenault earlier on in the season, um, and he's only got a couple games. Uh, where he has less than five targets. Um, you know, he's averaging almost 10 point fantasy points a game. Um, so Chenault uh, would probably be a, a pretty good option as a filler there instead of Conley. So, Well, I tell you, um, I guess that's what you get for doing notes on a Tuesday night for a podcast you record on a Saturday morning. <laughs> That's because perfect. Conley was a fantastic play. Well, I guess, okay. Well, I guess I'll I'll have to uh, to make consider. I mean, to be honest with you, I know that it doesn't sound like the difference between you know three thousand and like thirty six hundred for Cole is a big difference. But you know, when you're spending that much money on your game stack, six hundred dollars really is a big difference. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, I, as I was building lineups, it worked. Like, it really worked having Landry and, and Condi in there. That that was a great secondary stack to save money on. So, um, okay, well. Yeah, I like LaVisca. Like sorry LaVisca. I wasted your time. I mean, <laughs> I, for 300 bucks more, I, I'd be playing LaVisca's. Yeah, that's probably LaVisca. where it'll go. It, it honestly might just mean that I have less of of Jarvis to be honest I, I might just have to research and go a different route but well, let me right. let me try to save you some money you know and, and I know that you're talking you know primarily because of your main stack with Mahomes and Hill and Kelsey but but let's say you're not playing Kelsey I've got a guy for my Hail Mary which I don't even know if you can consider my Hail Mary but based on the price I'm going to uh, at the tight end spot that I think is in a really really good matchup this weekend and that's Kyle Rudolph for 2800 bucks. The Panthers travel into Minnesota. Carolina has been the worst in the league over the last four weeks against opposing tight ends, giving up 21 fantasy points a game. This weekend, no Herb Smith, potentially no Adam Thielen. Rudolph has had one game this year with more than four targets and 50 yards receiving. That was in week 10 against the Bears. Five targets for 63 yards. You know what was similar in that game? Irv Smith was not playing. With guys like Waller and Henry and Ingram and Hooper and Gronk, Jacek, Fant, all having matchups against teams in the bottom third of the league against the position, I think Rudolph is going to kind of slide under the radar a bit this week. He's going to get an increased workload with those two guys out. Your chance to save a little coin on the top end, Rudolph finds the end zone, and that magical 4X is an absolute lock. I like Kyle Rudolph, 2800 bucks, Minnesota. I'm going to have a ton of Rudolph here. Well, I'll tell you. Let me, let me tell you my main takeaway from that. And it is very unrelated to most of what you just said. Um, (laughs) My biggest takeaway, honestly, is that I am going to look to try to build an ultimate studs and duds lineup this week. Because if, you know, if everything from the Viking side of the ball is going to play out like that, 
and they are going up against one of the, I mean maybe the biggest run funnel um, in the you know in the league. I am gonna fire Dalvin Cook up so hardcore, man. So I don't know how possible it is, but I'm going to be looking into building a lineup where I go studs Mahomes, Hill, Kelsey, Cook, and see if I can manage to to find value everywhere else where I can put together a lineup because. All four of those guys could absolutely just go ham. And I could get 30 points a game from each of those guys. There's a buck 20 right there. I got to find 80 more points, um, which isn't going to be easy. But, um, you know, I'm going to see if I can fit all four of those guys in and go ultimate studs and duds. Yeah. And Delvin Cook at a cool. 9500 bones. Yeah, that's um that's that's most your salary in four guys. So, yeah, we'll see. Yep. I'm going to I'm going to look into it. And I will definitely get back to you later tonight on if that's possible cuz I'm kind of I mean, obviously it is, but it, you know, you can't sit there and just play guys that don't have a chance. So, um, we'll so see yeah, if I can run into something. You know, if you put Mahomes, Cook, Hill and Kelsey into your lineup, uh-huh. that leaves you with a remaining salary of seventeen thousand seven hundred dollars yep. to fill an RB, two receivers, a flex, and a defense. That's right. The defense you go super cheap. We can make it work. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll put together a lineup here in the next two hours, and I'll send it to you that has that, and we'll see how pretty or ugly it gets. I'll do the same. We'll compare notes. Well, mine will be better. No, yeah, maybe. It's debatable. <laughs> it is debatable. <laughs> All right, brother. Uh, you know, let's uh, we we get to sit down and watch our Michigan Wolverines here in an hour. Hopefully, they don't speak for yourself. Egg. Yeah, you know it's funny because I woke up this morning, I turned on the TV, and they had the October fifteenth, two thousand and five Penn State game playing on ESPNU, and uh, my boy Mikey Adams and I were at that game when Manningham caught that touchdown with one second left in the end zone to win it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was sitting there kind of reminiscing a little bit about, you know, the good old days when we could win football games. Um, it was pretty, it was pretty neat seeing, <laughs> you know, everybody storm the field, you know, against, I think they were what eighth or sixth or something like that in the country at that time. And Michigan was unranked. So let's hope for, uh, for a McNamara day, right? Yeah, we that got to. Yeah. Been impressive last week when he came in. Yeah, well, um, he was playing Rutgers, so yeah. No, I'm totally, I'm totally with you. If totally you'd have told me you. at the beginning of the year, you know, his stat line against Rutgers, I'd have said, "Well, well, duh, Patrick. They probably won by 40." Well, right. nope, they sure didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he uh, he definitely gives us a better chance to win, I think, than Milton. Our problem is uh, the guy on the sidelines in the khaki pants and the headset. So he he, he doesn't care. I, I I don't know what's like we talked about last week. I don't know what his problem is, but um, is, he is yeah, just he's not totally the guy. Checked out. Yep. like he's just checked out. He's yep. he's non-existent. Uh, You're more fired up for this game than he is. No, I know. <laughs> I I know. <laughs> it's it's a problem. Put some khakis know? on and and start driving. I'll tell you what, man. I'll tell you what. You know, we talked about it before we came on the air, and, you know, Black Monday's right around the corner. Thank you for the birthday wish. My birthday was the other day, and I couldn't think of a better birthday present to wake up Monday morning and see Matt Patricia and Jim Harbaugh both out. I don't care who they bring in. I just want them both out. And for me, that would be a successful weekend. We'll have uh, Rich Rod be the coach of the Lions. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and we'll bring Wayne Fonz to Ann Arbor. Even better. Cocaine Wayne. Like yep, yeah, I'm in. All right, buddy. Well, good luck to you this week, man. And uh, let's go ahead and call this one a show. All right, man. Have a good one. Good luck this weekend, everybody.